Hi everybody, Gary Williams here for Toolbarn.com. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I love power tools. And the reason I love power tools is because they help you get work done more quickly and uh, more easily. And if you get work done faster and easier, well then you can get back to relaxing and having fun a lot more quickly as well. In fact, today we're going to show you a few things that you can do with power tools to help you have fun during these summer months. And uh, they're kind of cool projects. First, we're going to show you something that Man from Man vs. Tool put together. And now, usually, Man is in the business of breaking things. That's what he likes to do, or making things just a little bit more rugged. However, he brought out his kinder, more sensitive side to build a, a 2x4 xylophone. So I don't know how actually kind and sensitive that is, but he brought out his musical side and made this giant xylophone out of 2x4s and rope. It's pretty cool. I didn't know that he was so musically inclined or declined, as the case may be. But we'll show you that. It's pretty cool. Nice for the backyard. Then we're going to show you a giant kerplunk game. Now, this is a great game. And it's something that you can set up in the backyard. Kids of all ages can play. You know, it's, it's really a lot of fun. And it's not that hard to do. It takes a little bit of uh, work with a jigsaw, but it's kind of fun. Oh, and dogs love these little plastic balls. So we'll show you that. But first, I'm going to show you how to make something I've never made before. And it's really kind of a cool project. It's an Anaconda Eclair. Wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Hold on. Let me check something. No, no. Not an Anaconda Eclair. It's an Adirondack chair. That's totally different. So stick around. You'll enjoy seeing that, I'm sure. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, check out the backyard for snakes, will you? Adirondack chairs have been around for a long time. They're classics for good reason because they're also really comfortable and they're not really all that hard to make. You can make a bunch of them if you want to, but we're just going to make one. We found chair plans on the internet and took them to a local office product store to have them printed in actual size. Then we carefully cut them out and we wound up with templates for every piece of the chair. We cut our wood roughly to size. We had one by six boards. And after those initial cuts, we laid the templates on the boards and traced each one so we know how to cut each piece. Just to keep things organized, we kept each board with its respective part of the pattern. Now, we didn't buy all kinds of lumber, so we didn't have all the sizes we needed for every single piece of this chair. So we improvised, especially on the seat slats. We used our compound miter saw to rip the boards to the right size. It actually worked really slickly, and uh, with the axial glide saw we used, nice clean cuts, easy to handle, worked out well. There are a lot of curved pieces in these chairs, and those can take time to cut. Now, we used some good jigsaws for that job, which really helped. Frankly, I'm not a great jigsaw guy, so I tended to kind of chip away at the material. I made some shorter cuts and then went back and cleaned them up. Here's an obvious tip. Like any other project where you're cutting wood, take your time so you don't make mistakes and waste material. Been there, done that. Don't you do it. Once everything was cut, we started drilling the bolt holes. Now the templates are great. They show you exactly where to drill those holes. So just make sure you mark the boards correctly and drill the holes exactly where the templates tell you to. When the holes were done, we were ready to start assembly. You do have to sand the back support at a 30 degree angle. Also, to make sure your chair is symmetrical, align the center of the back support with the middle of the center board on the chair back. A little sanding, staining, painting, whatever, and there you've got it a complete and comfortable Adirondack chair. Make a whole set.
I gotta be honest, I had never heard of Kerplunk until Steve, our producer, said, let's make a Kerplunk game. And I said, well, okay. And he found the plans on the internet. I thought he was just kidding me, but he found the plans and we decided that we would make one. And it's actually kind of a cool game. You're basically going to make what looks like a cylinder of chicken wire with a bunch of colored sticks running through it and a bunch of colored balls stacked in top of it, on top of it. And well, you'll kind of get the idea as we go through this thing. But basically we needed four rings of plywood. Three of them needed a hole in the middle 14 inches in diameter, and two of those rings have outside diameters of 18 inches, two have outside diameters of 20 inches. I simply took a piece of scrap wood, made a rough compass with holes drilled at 7, 9, and 10 inches, anchored this thing at the center of the boards, and drew my circles. Now, <clears throat> you may have noticed I only mentioned three of uh, four plywood rings. That's because the fourth is the base, and you cut that into the shape of a peace sign. And I got to tell you, that took me back to my youth when I saw that. But Anyway, that bottom section makes up your goals. You spray paint those, uh, you color code them basically in the same way that you color code and spray paint the bamboo sticks. So you got that all done. And then you wrap chicken wire around the top and bottom pieces and attach that chicken wire to itself. And basically what you wind up with when you're all done is a circle of chicken wire or a cylinder of chicken wire. In there, you stick those bamboo sticks in all kinds of different directions. Then you pour a bunch of colored bowls, balls into the top of the thing. And the, the order of play is that you start removing those sticks and it all depends on how the balls fall, uh, depends on how you score. Well, get the rules off the internet. You can either play by the rules and make up your own, but you know, either way, it's kind of fun to do and it's really simple and little kids can do it and adults can do it too, so check it out. So once you've got everything built, it's all a question of logistics to help you kind of finish things off in the backyard. So for me, you put the Adirondack chair in just the right place and you can reach over and play a little music to entertain your friends and neighbors, or not, depending upon their musical taste, of course. And, and you can also set the Kerplunk game right next to you. And you know, this is pretty handy because you really don't have to loosen up or do anything real physical. You can just kind of sit here and pull these deals out and play that game, and uh, it's a pretty easy deal, all told. I think I just won. So, anyway, have fun. It's fun to build this kind of stuff. It's fun to set. I may build a couple more of these Adirondack chairs myself. You know, these things are great. They've got nice big armrests for you to set your beverage or a, a plate of food. So, a lot of, you know, just a lot to recommend these things. I'd suggest you give it a try. They're not hard, they're not expensive. Give them a shot, okay? In the meantime, hey, more power to you. I've always wanted to say that to close one of these things. More power to you, okay? Have fun. We'll see you next time on Toolbarn.com's Barn Banner.